hey, so I, 26 female, recently got married to my husband, 26, after a six year long relationship. We had an intimate ceremony at his aunt's farmhouse property, which is not what we had in mind initially at all. I had actually wanted to get married on the beach because that's where some of our happiest memories are. My husband and I are both water babies and would make a trip to the beach at least once a month to unwind and let loose. So it's a special place for us and I have even started looking for hotels where we could all stay. Like literally any other bride on this planet, I wanted my wedding to be special and I had even been saving money to have a huge celebration for the last five years. I work in advertising and I get paid decently, but my husband and I used to live modestly and tried our best to save money for the future. We had been planning to book one of the best hotels with a sea-facing view so our guests could really have a fantastic time and it was meant to be a luxurious experience. But we had to change our plans and scale down considerably because my parents decided to borrow money from me a couple of months ago and I couldn't bring myself to decline. Some context here. My brother, 24 male, also got married a couple of months ago but it had been sudden for him and they didn't plan much. He had been with his wife for about two years and he had proposed to her just a month before they got married. It was a really small ceremony with just family and a few friends, but I was happy for him since it was their wedding and their choice. But a few weeks after the wedding, my mother reached out to me and asked to borrow $15,000. She told me that my father had fallen ill all of a sudden and said that it was probably his diabetes that was acting up again, but she couldn't bear all the medical expenses by herself and she needed me to help her. She told me that there was a special drug that the doctors had suggested, but it cost a lot of money since it had to be imported and she couldn't afford it because their insurance didn't cover this. I was really concerned for my father's health, so I decided to step up and lend her the money. No questions asked. I paid him a couple of visits and asked my mother to show me the medical reports several times, but she always managed to evade those questions. Whenever I would visit them, my dad was always in bed. But for some reason, he just didn't appear very sick. Even when I asked my mother why he hadn't been moved to the hospital so he could be observed and kept under professional care, she told me that it wasn't necessary at the moment. But somehow, he was sick enough to need to be administered an uncommon drug that they didn't produce here, and it wasn't even covered by their insurance. I'm not an idiot. After the first few visits, I had figured out that something was very fishy going on with my parents, but I didn't want to accuse them of anything before I was sure. It would be a really bad look for me if I accused them of lying to me about a medical emergency just to borrow money and then it all turned out to be true after all. I realized that my brother hadn't been visiting our parents and even when I would ask them why he wasn't there, my father would tell me that they didn't want him to worry because he was just so young and they wanted him to be focused on his work. And yet they were fine with me being worried sick about them. I did speak to my brother about it on a phone call after a couple of weeks had passed and he still hadn't visited our father. He told me that he would drop by as soon as he came back from his honeymoon. That was news to me because I had no idea that he had already left for his honeymoon because my parents hadn't told me and neither he nor his wife had posted about this on their social media either so I had no clue where he was. When I asked him why he hadn't told me he said that he had been planning to surprise everybody by coming back after a month of being MIA with a bunch of photos, stories and memories from their trip around Europe. He said that he had no intention of telling me either, but he had been quite concerned when I said that our father was sick, which is why he found it necessary to reply to me. He told me that he had spoken to our parents after he received my alarming text, but they had told him that he had nothing to worry about and they were doing just fine here. He told me that our parents had probably just exaggerated the situation while talking to me and I had believed it because I was kind of neurotic which had led to a misunderstanding. 
I tried to give my parents the benefit of the doubt by forcing myself to believe that maybe they had been hiding the truth from my brother because they didn't want to ruin his honeymoon or get him all worried about them. Because I knew what I had seen at my parents' house and there had been no scope for a misunderstanding. But then my brother mentioned to me that he would have felt really guilty about not being there for dad if what I had said about him being very sick turned out to be true, because apparently our parents were the ones funding his insanely expensive and long honeymoon. All the warning bells started going off in my head, so I asked him exactly how much this trip was going to cost him, and then he told me that this trip was going to cost our parents at least twelve to fifteen thousand dollars because he and his wife were pulling out all the stops and really making the most of their honeymoon. By living in the most expensive hotels and eating at the best restaurants because they can only do this once. They would also be shopping for a lot of stuff and even that was going to be covered by our parents. I knew instantly that this was where my money was going and there was no medical emergency at all. There never had been any emergency to speak of and that's why they had no documents to show me and had never even been at the hospital. My parents had just invented that whole story because they wanted the money to fund my brother's honeymoon and that was supposed to be their wedding gift. I felt extremely betrayed while hearing my brother brag about how our parents were going above and beyond for him just so the two of them could enjoy their honeymoon since they hadn't been able to have a grand wedding. The money that I had lent to my parents was from my wedding fund and I felt like I had been stabbed in the back when I realized that my parents had given it all away to my brother. When I confronted them after that phone call, my parents told me that they had to cook up some story because they knew that I wouldn't give them the money if I knew that this was going to be used by my brother for his honeymoon. They told me that he had been struggling at work and had been down in the dumps for a long time, so they wanted him to have some fun without having to worry about money. Unfortunately, they couldn't fund it themselves because that would endanger their own retirement fund and so they had to borrow money from me. Their reasoning was that I was still young and earning and had a lot of years ahead of me where I could work and earn this money back, but it was not the same for them. They also said that it was just money and they would return it at some point. But for now, I just needed to put myself second and think about my brother's feelings because this honeymoon had apparently rejuvenated him and rescued him from getting depressed. I couldn't believe it because this meant that I would have to cut down on my wedding expenses for no reason. Just to be clear, I had been okay with the idea of having a smaller wedding as long as it meant that my father's health wouldn't suffer, but this was not something that I had signed up for. I was furious once they told me the truth and I told them that they had to pay me back before I got married because I wanted to use this money for my wedding. I had a lot of expenses to think of if I wanted to go through with the beach wedding and even though my husband and his family were covering some of the expenses, I had to look out for myself as well. My parents paying for the wedding had never been on the card since they had told me very clearly on that they could either pay for me to go to college or they could pay for when I got married, but they couldn't afford both. I had decided I was going to college and would pay for my wedding on my own, which is why I had been saving up for my wedding myself. In case any of you guys are wondering, when my brother started college, I did ask him if my parents had made him choose between these two as well, and he had laughed in my face as if this was the most ridiculous idea ever. I never brought that up with my parents because I didn't want to accuse them of having a favorite, even though it was very clear that they did have one. But I was young and I still needed their help because I hadn't found a job at the time, so bringing these things up and fighting with them over it would only make the situation worse for me, and it didn't make sense to confront them about it. But it did come up several years later when I confronted them about the money that they had taken from me and how they had always favored my brother over me. They tried to deny it, but it was as clear as day, and I told them that they had to pay me back because I wasn't going to give up my dream wedding just because my brother was struggling at work. 
My parents could mollycoddle him by sending him off on an expensive vacation with their own money, but I hadn't worked super hard for five years and saved up for my wedding just so they could snatch that amount away from me and hand it to my brother. But they told me that they couldn't return the money to me in one go before the wedding and it would take them a couple of years to give all of it back to me. And they actually expected me to be okay with it because apparently there was nothing more important than family. If I was ready to spend that money on a medical emergency for my father, then there was no reason why I couldn't spend that money to prevent my brother from slipping into depression. Here's the thing though, my brother was never going to get depressed because of work and that's because he never took his job seriously which is why he was bad at it and was earning so little. He works in sales and his income is almost all commission so if he's bad at what he does then he has nobody to blame but himself. And he might have been a little upset about that but I can guarantee it to you guys that he was never going to get depressed. He just didn't care enough about anything because he had been spoiled by my parents all his life and just wasn't used to working hard for stuff, which is why he seemed upset about his job. That was all that it was. But my parents blew it out of proportion to make it seem like he was actually bothered by his failures at work and he had to be rescued. It was all a lot of baloney and I tried to tell my parents that this wedding was really important to me. They already made a commitment to my husband and his family that I was going to cover certain expenses which would become impossible if I didn't have the money so they needed to do something. But they told me that there was no way that they could return the money to me before I got married and I would just have to scale down or ask my husband and his family to help out. It got to a point where I actually found myself begging them to return my money to me. But all that they did was just shake their heads and tell me no and that they would return it eventually. But giving it back to me before the wedding wasn't possible. I left their house crying and when I came back home and told my husband everything, he was just as furious and even more upset than me. He was about to contact a lawyer but I told him that there would be no point because there was no written proof that my mother had wanted the money for medical reasons or had ever said that she was going to return it to me. It had all been informal and there were no binding contracts or documents to prove a single thing. So even if we did file a lawsuit against her, it would just lead to more of our money being wasted by paying for the lawyer because it would probably not even be able to prove anything since we didn't even have text in our favor. Everything had been verbal and off the record so as much as we wanted to go after my parents we decided not to because it would be pointless and we didn't want to waste more money on a hopeless situation. Instead we decided to start thinking about how we were going to change our wedding plans. Thankfully my husband's family came to the rescue after they found out about what my parents had done and his aunt offered to let us use her farmhouse venue for free. We had always been very keen on the idea of a beach wedding right from the beginning so his aunt hadn't suggested it at first. But now that we were looking at other places she made that suggestion and I decided to check the place out. My husband had already seen the place before but when I first walked into the venue I just knew that this was it. It was a beautiful place and even though it wasn't anywhere near the beach my husband and I were content with it. His aunt was letting us use the venue for free so it was all the more reason for us to go ahead and start planning around the farmhouse instead. I got busy with the wedding planning and that gave me more of a reason to cut my parents off. I had already made up my mind that they were not going to be invited to my wedding but I had been on the fence about my brother because he hadn't exactly done anything wrong since he didn't know that my parents had borrowed the money from me to give it to him. But he made the decision much easier for me by calling me up once he was back from his honeymoon and tearing into me about humiliating our parents by asking them to return my money. He told me that he had heard about whatever had happened from our mother and he was very upset that I was being so difficult about this. Apparently he believed that this was just no big deal even though he was the one who spent my money and said that as soon as he could he would return it to me but I just had to suck it up before the wedding and scale down. 
So that's when I made up my mind about him as well. And after that, I didn't speak to either of them. Now that I didn't have the entirety of my wedding fund, I couldn't spend money blindly and have a luxurious, fancy wedding. Honestly, I think that worked for me because the wedding that I did have was a lot more beautiful than anything that I had in mind earlier. We had to scale down, but it was worth it because after a while, we realized that this day was supposed to be about us. And in our daily lives, we were not the kind of people that we were trying to portray ourselves as. So it would be pretty shallow if we went out of our way to spend a bomb on a fancy wedding just to impress people. And we decided that we were going to cut down on the cost of the wedding and instead do something better with the money that we had saved afterwards. In a way, I'm thankful for the way that things worked out because my wedding was still really beautiful and dreamy, but it had none of the pomp and show that I had in mind earlier and it was really a good thing because we were only surrounded by the people who we loved and who loved us to celebrate our coming together. I think that's pretty much all you need for a wedding, so I'm pretty happy with how things turned out. And I posted the photos of my wedding a couple of days ago. Everyone from my family who had been invited to the wedding had been given very strict and specific instructions to make sure that my parents and my brother didn't get to know that the invitations had already been sent out. Because then they would throw a tantrum since they didn't get one. And that's how we managed to have a private ceremony without them showing up or trying to bully me into inviting them before the wedding. But now that that was over and everything had gone smoothly, I didn't see anything wrong about posting the photos on social media. However, they got to see it somehow and contacted me the very next day to demand an explanation as to why they had not been invited to my wedding. I thought that it was pretty surprising that they even expected to be invited because the last conversation that I had with any of them hadn't been a pleasant one. I had been crying when I left my parents' house after our last fight, and we hadn't spoken to each other since. And the last time that I spoke to my brother, he made me feel like this was all my fault and I was the one who was being dramatic. After that, I hadn't spoken to any of them, and they hadn't tried to talk to me either, so I didn't know why they had even expected to be invited. Not only had they expected that I was going to invite them, but they were upset that they were not present at the wedding. My parents were the ones who called me and then added my brother to the phone call so that all of them could yell at me at once. But I didn't care for it and I found it to be very entitled of them. I had already cut them out of my life and I didn't need this drama while I was trying to enjoy my life as a newlywed. So I told them that after they had stolen money from me, I had to cut down on the cost of the wedding. So I decided only to invite family and a couple of close friends. And since they were neither, they didn't make the list. After that, I hung up and blocked them, hoping that they would leave me alone now. But an hour after that phone call, my husband told me that my brother had reached out to him so he could inform us that my parents had been really insulted by what I had said. My mother was devastated. So she kept crying and almost fainted because she was crying so hard. That's all that he said, but I started feeling guilty because I didn't mean to hurt my parents that badly. He might be bluffing, but I don't know for sure, and it's making me feel weirdly bad ever since I hurt. AITA for not inviting my parents and my brother to my wedding because they stole money from my wedding fund? Update 1. Hi, so it's been a week since I had that last conversation with my parents and my brother and I have decided that I'm not going to speak to them again. My mother can cry as much as she wants to, but it's not going to change the facts. I had been crying really hard the day that I had confronted them about the money and had even begged them to return it to me before the wedding, but they didn't seem to care about that. They had taken it really lightly, and so now I was going to do the same to them. You reap what you sow. I also told my brother never to contact me or my husband, especially my husband because he had nothing to do with any of this, and I didn't want my family to bother him with their petty antics, and then had blocked him again after that text because I didn't want my family to have any access to me. 
They had treated me badly all my life, but now I was not going to take that anymore. I swear if I had a way, then I would even file a lawsuit against them and get my money back. But that might be a bit of a long shot right now since we don't have any tangible evidence. My husband thinks that it is worth a try and it might just work. So we have been considering it. He has been in talks with a reputed lawyer and in a couple of days, we are going to make a decision about what to do. Until then, I just have to think of a way to make them confess or admit to the fact that they had borrowed the money from me under the pretext of using it for a medical emergency, but then they had given it away to my brother so he could have a fun honeymoon. It's going to be difficult to prove it in court, but I don't want to let them off the hook so easily. I deserve to get my money back and I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that they return it to me. And they return it to me soon enough. Update two. Yesterday, I told my brother not to bother my husband with our family drama. So he obviously took it as a sign to drag him into this, even though it doesn't involve him. After we got back from work, my husband told me that my parents and my brother had sent him a bunch of texts and demanded that he speak to me and tell me to unblock them. When he blocked them, they decided to take it a level higher and actually showed up at his workplace. Apparently, they had been waiting for him right outside and as soon as they saw his car leaving the place, they started tailing him and honking at him repeatedly. So he had to pull over and wait for them to catch up because he could recognize my brother's car and knew that it was them. He also knew that if he didn't stop and wait for them, then they would just follow him home and that would really bother me. So he decided to take one for the team and entertain their BS. When he pulled over, my brother left his car, walked up to his window and said that they wanted to speak to him in person. There was a diner nearby and my husband just wanted to get it over with. They took a booth in the diner so my family could say whatever it was that they believed was so important. My brother told him that he believed that it wasn't fair for me to cut everyone off over some money and thought that it was a bit of an overreaction. They also thought that my implying that we were not family anymore just because they had borrowed money from me was taking things too far. I had already blocked them so they couldn't reach out to me, but they knew that if my husband tried to speak to me, then I might just hear him out. So they were trying to appeal to him and then my husband could remind me that we were a family no matter what. So I needed to act like it instead of throwing tantrums over every little misunderstanding and acting like a brat. My parents also said that they were going to return the money to me eventually, but it was just not possible for them to give it back to me all at once. And they had already explained it to me like a million times, so I needed to be more thoughtful because my brother was struggling at work and my parents were about to retire in a couple of years. They were trying to convince my husband that this was all my fault and I was acting out for no reason. But my husband played it really well and instead of putting them in their place, he actually entertained it and made them feel like he was on their side. He told them that he could try and explain this to me, but it would help a lot more if they reached out to me personally as well and sent a heartfelt message to me. So far, they had only been taking an accusatory tone with me, but my husband convinced them that if they acknowledge their mistakes, then that might calm me down and those idiots actually bought it. My husband manipulated them into sending me a message where they acknowledged what they had done and made them believe that might make me go easy on them and I would end up apologizing to them because tone was everything. It's all a lot of baloney, of course, because as soon as they send that message, we are using that as an admission of guilt and going after them legally. I'm actually really proud of my husband because he dealt with this much better than I would have. And I think he's an evil genius, but he's my evil genius, so I love him. Update three. Well, my husband's plan worked and we are so pumped right now. My parents and my brother, like a bunch of idiots, sent me an email detailing every single lie that they had told and confessing to whatever they had done. So now that we have proof, my husband has given our lawyer the green light to go ahead with the petition and soon enough, we will be getting our money back. 
$15,000 might not be a lot to a lot of people, but to me, it means a lot because I spent the last five years trying to save up for the future. And I worked really hard to get where I am today. It took a lot of late nights and sacrifices, and I'm not about to let it all go in vain just because my brother is lazy and my parents want to enable him. So we will be suing them, and no matter what it takes, we will absolutely be getting my money back. We have also started planning for our honeymoon, and it's going to be a short trip to the beach again because that's where this all started, and it's always going to be a special place for us. We might take a longer break in a couple of months and make an actual vacation out of it, but until then, this is going to have to be done. We realize that we don't have to impress people and spend a ton of money. We can just do whatever makes us happy, and so we are doing exactly that. Also, because I don't want to be like my brother who posted a bunch of photos from his honeymoon after they returned to rub it in people's faces, but now he's going to be sued just for that. It's really sad for them, but they brought it onto themselves, and now they totally deserve whatever's going to come to them. Stay tuned for more stories from Argo Relationships.